I found in that regard myself a couple years ago, of all things, in the Amazon. Jumped on an airplane here and went to Texas and went to Quito, Ecuador, and then took an airplane as far as it could go over there by the Amazon to meet with some traditional elders to talk about energy and empowerment politically, and they asked me to come and to talk to them. So we drove for 45 minutes in the mountains, and it rained like it does, and it was very muddy, and we came around the corner into that village, and they were waiting for me to come and talk to them, and I noticed a young girl there. Looked like she could come from Nebraska. She was Indian girl. She had t-shirt shorts on, and she was muddy, and her face and her hair was muddy because it was muddy, and it was monsoon season. I looked at her and she watched me in that truck. And she watched me for a long time. She stopped everything she did. She watched me until I couldn't see her anymore. And I felt sorry for her. Because she could be my granddaughter. And I stopped and I thought that I wonder if she has the same opportunities to live, to be educated, to go to school that my granddaughter has. I thought about those things and I felt bad. Short few minutes later I came in to talk to some of those tribal leaders and something occurred to me at that time and I said hello to them and the first thing I did was I apologized. I said I came here and I looked at this young lady and she looked like my granddaughter and I asked myself the question will she have the same things that my granddaughter has Will she have the same opportunities? And I want to apologize to all of you because of my arrogance. Who am I to talk like that? And who am I to forget and not acknowledge that there's one girl? She was my granddaughter. She was my granddaughter. If we believe, we talk us and that we are all related. And I think we have to start thinking about that. You think about that in your deliberations as you gather here. Because we are indeed related to everybody in the world. We are all relatives. And uh, what, what uh, is good for our people is good for you. And what harms you will harm us. And these kind of basic tendencies, basic precepts are things that should kind of uh, be amongst all of your discussions and your deliberations because we need to make sure that all in this country and around the world truly understand what we are talking about. We're not talking about technology, we are, but we're talking about getting back to that basic understanding, you know, about who we are and how should we should respect one another. The Lakota relatives, the medicine men, have uh, for generations gone into Uweepi ceremonies and came out of those ceremonies and spirits would tell our traditional medicine men something that all of you when all is gone and all has been spent and the blessings that we've been given are ignored and we lost our way and we're in need and we're in disarray in this United States of America. That when that happens, they're going to come to the native people. Now that all is lost, and they're gonna ask you, what do we need to do? I've heard that for a generation, 20 years, they've told me that. And I thought about it only tonight when I walked in here, that it uh, has been foretold and maybe Mark and maybe Tim is foretold even beginning tonight that they would come and they would talk to you and tell you how you should be good to one another how you should not spoil your mother earth and you should humble yourself and be pitiful because only then is the creator going to hear those things that we want for our children and for our grandchildren. I say those things to you, and uh, I leave you with this about my grandchildren. 
I did not mention this earlier, but uh, my grandchildren are Winnebago, half Winnebago, and their father is Comanche. And I always say, that's a bad combination. <laughs> my wife is a Yankton Sioux. Winnebago's used to be bitter enemies with the Lakota relatives. We fought them for 200 years. We were better enemies. And some even remember those days, and when I'm around the Lakota relatives, every now and then they'll remind me of that. <laughs> but I always tell them, I always make mention of something to them. I have special respect for the Lakota people because they gave me my daughter. They gave her to me. And I'm going to do everything I can uh, to express my thanks to them, to help her to live and to grow and to flourish. And children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren. That's the way I see her. I'll not be here for that. But I trust that. And I look out for that seventh generation coming after us because the things you do and say are going to be felt seven generations from now. So we need to do something for those who are going to come after us. So among the native people, with the Comanches and the Yankton Sioux and the Yakimas and the Omahas and the Santees and the Winnebago's and the Kickapoos, uh, among others in my own family, we are all related. It is high time you tell the rest of the world what you learned in Omaha, Nebraska, that all Native people in the world are related, and so are you. And then perhaps we'd act responsibly if we all understood that. I want to say, Pinagigi, thank you. Have a good time in Omaha, Nebraska. And prayers have been said for you. <coughs> and Bruce, I want you to come up here for a second share something with you. Among native people, as you all know, uh, tobacco is, is, is important to us because the creator of all things, Tunkashila Mauna, covets tobacco. And he covets tobacco because it was given us not to smoke. Tobacco was given us to use as we pray in our, with our chinupas in a traditional ways we were to uh, offer up prayers and that smoke would take our prayers to heaven. That is how we look at tobacco. It's something the Creator covets. And among our people, when there is something, when somebody brings tobacco to you uh, and you accept that tobacco, you're accepting what they are going to ask of you. Occasionally people will come to me and they say, Frank, I want you to take this tobacco. And I want you to do this thing for me. And you always say, yes, I'll do the best I can. I want you to continue in this effort, to continue to lead this effort, to continue to make sure that this effort is front and center in Nebraska, New York, and Pennsylvania and other states and nations represented here. Continue with your work, and I'm going to give you this tobacco, symbolic of that request that I have, that I'm making for my grandchildren and great-grandchildren, that you would see what you can do to make a better way for them and protect them and protect all of our children. I want you to have that, Bruce Pinagigi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.